Hey everybody, it's Johnny here with Team Legit. Today I'm going to go ahead and show you the uh, Ruby. Uh, Ruby is a autonomous autopilot system made by youthere.com. Uh, Jim Hall, he's the creator of this uh, uh, autopilot system. Uh, really, really good system. It's not your average uh, autopilot system. Um, it does much, much more than that. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the actual um, Ruby control board. This is the uh, Ruby main board. It's uh, true IMU. Uh, the really good thing about Ruby is that it can be mounted either on a flat surface on the X axis, you can mount it on the Y axis, you can even put it up on its side, it can be upside down. Um, either way it doesn't matter as long as it's flat on one of the three axes. You can actually even have it standing up uh, and it, it will work just fine. So uh, that's really good for aircrafts that have space restraints and, and uh, things like that. Um, the way I have mine set up uh, right now is um, <coughs> I've got uh, channel 1 through 6 plugged into the Ruby. Um, Ruby can drive servos through the 1 through 6 uh, servo ports. Um, and, uh, but it cannot run them off of 7, 8, 9. We'll get into that in a second. Um, I'm running a 5-volt, uh, 5-amp five BEC straight into the uh, throttle port on the minus and the plus. And this will be driving basically my Ruby and all my servos that are associated with uh, the, the control system. Um, I left the uh, signal wire out because I'm going to go ahead and put in the signal wire from my ESC. I will not be running the BEC in my aircraft. So um, with the Ruby uh, mounted on my uh, flat surface, I went ahead and put a little bit of um, uh, padding underneath and I, I zip tied it down. Um, you can mount it however you need to uh, in your aircraft, uh, whatever suits your needs. A um, couple things to be mindful for. Um, you've got these little uh, JST connectors on the sides. Uh, they take different ports. Um, this one right here is for the GPS, so my GPS wire will come in here and plug into there. Uh, on the opposite side, you've got the uh, airspeed sensor uh, or the, um, the uh, uh, magnetometer. Uh, that's on the other side of this. In the back here, you've got a uh, plug for your um, RC receiver. And the great thing about Ruby, it can run off of your um, PPM output of your receiver. I'm running the, uh, the Dragonlink 12 channel receiver. So in my case, I would basically just plug in, um, as you can see here, I've got the uh, uh, black, red, and white, which is um, black and red is five volts coming from the BEC. Uh, I'll be powering my receiver. And the uh, second wire that's out by itself is the RSSI. So if you're going to be using a Dragonlink or similar system, Simply plug Ruby into your PPM port. It will power your receiver for you and also receive the signal from your PPM port. Secondly, you have the signal wire for your RSSI and that's all you need to do from your receiver. So um, that's coming in from the receiver to the Ruby, uh, your controls and whatnot, and that plugs into the back here. Um, the other, uh, uh, other port on the uh, rear end of the Ruby is a radio modem. This is for any uh, third party radio modems that will come soon or, or later. Um, next thing, let's go ahead and talk about the expander. This is the Ruby expander. Uh, now remember, Ruby is a modular system, so you basically will plug different modules on top. And the way it works is they just stack on top and lock into place. So now I've added the expander module. What the expander module does is it gives you a um, uh, USB uh, input so you can do calibrations or uh, do uh, data logging through the USB but it also allows a small slot here for a micro SD now you'll need this micro SD card for your firmware your configuration files and also data logging every time you connect Ruby and plug it in together it will create a new UTD file that's a data file uh, you can then upload that file into your computer. You can see uh, where Ruby has gone, the flight path. Um, you can see any kind of uh, airspeed, different things like that, that that will all be logged onto that SD card. So with that being said, the Ruby will uh, take the expander. The next module, uh, which I don't have yet, but I'll, I'll be getting uh, here shortly in, in the mail, is the uh, Ruby OSD. And that literally will just plug right on top of it. You feed your video through it. It will also power your... Uh, your video devices if you plug in a auxiliary power source into it and everything that's going on with the Ruby will be overlaid onto your uh, uh, video. 
then the next module that'll be plugged in on top of that will be your telemetry module. That will allow you to control Ruby with your laptop or computer. Uh, you can then plug in and calibrate a joystick if you'd like to use a joystick or uh, uh, like an F16 mode. Um, you can also read all the telemetry. You can see what's going on with Ruby in the, uh, on the computer. You can tell it to do different things, change its waypoint, uh, change its heading, change its altitude. Um, just a whole lot of uh, things open up once you plug in the telemetry module. And that'll be coming too. I'll do a follow-up video for that uh, later. So uh, I talked briefly about the BEC powering uh, uh, slots 1 through um, 6. However, slots 7, 8, and 9 that are, are on to the expander have to have their own separate BEC. These wires on this uh, connector right here are too small to feed 5 volts. So uh, it's not uh, adequate to power these servos. So if you'd like to power these servos, either run a BEC to the, all the servos or run a BEC to the expander and then just run your signal wires in for those servos. So let's put this aside and let me talk to you guys real quick about my GPS. You've got a uh, small micro uh, GPS. This is a very, very quick, very accurate GPS. Uh, from cold starts, from sitting from a week, I've had GPS locks in about uh, 30 to 35 seconds outside. Um, I've got GPS locks even in the garage. Uh, it takes up to a minute. Once my battery is connected and I've already acquired a GPS um, and I go to change out the battery and put in a new battery, I usually get a GPS within 10 seconds or less. Um, one thing you'll notice when you initially plug in your Ruby, this light will flash on the uh, GPS and it'll just flash intermittently. That's saying that it's looking for a GPS signal. Once the light goes out, you've uh, acquired a GPS, you're uh, ready to uh, fly based on the GPS. So I've got that wire running down into here where Ruby will be sitting. Uh, my next thing I've got here is my airspeed sensor and magnetometer. Um, I've got mine mounted up here on the nose of the aircraft. Um, which is not usually recommended, but in my case with the FPV Raptor, I made it work. Uh, normally what you would do is run this quarter inch tubing into a thicker tube to make sure it doesn't flex or bend. But in my case, I'm just running a carbon fiber rod, um, and uh, so I should be picking up my airspeed with that there. Uh, the reason I say it's not a good idea to uh, put it on the front of your plane, if you do any kind of G's or any kind of maneuvers, or if you come down too hard, you have the... Um, the risk of having your battery slide forward and hitting your uh, magnetometer and your airspeed sensor and you don't want to damage it. In my case, my battery will be sitting on top of a tray and everything else will be underneath. Uh, another thing to note with the airspeed magnetometer is when you have it mounted, uh, let's say on your wing, let me grab a wing here. When you say you uh, mount it here on the wing, uh, or here, here, wherever it would be. Make sure you try to keep it away from any kind of servos, uh, any uh, fairness objects, or anything that could put out a uh, magnetic uh, signal. Even servo wires or um, uh, motor wires, things like that could cause some interference. So you want to make sure it's well isolated. Uh, say, for example, if I did install the airspeed magnetometer here, my wing, and I have my uh, Pitot tube airspeed sensor coming out the front here, uh, you got to make sure that it's not completely sealed. Uh, that cavity needs to be able to breathe. In my case, uh, it, air will be going in and I can, and I can read the uh, barometric pressure, but if you have the airspeed sensor sealed, uh, say laminated or taped over in your wing, you're not going to get a good reading and uh, it could cause any other unwanted uh, reactions from the Ruby. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get everything installed in the aircraft and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like after everything has been installed. So the last thing I did was uh, install my uh, motor sensor, my power sense. This tells you your voltage reading and things like that. It also gave Ruby an indication of uh, the battery's too low. It'll go ahead and get into auto land. Um, one thing I did do on my uh, um, motor sense is uh, I uh, soldered on my uh, battery lead onto the inside of the uh, ESC. Not the inside, but the in input side of the uh, uh, motor sense. On the outside where uh, you would plug in your ESC, I went ahead and soldered up my ESC. I soldered out uh, my BEC to that side as well. And I also soldered up an additional uh, auxiliary 12 volts. That's for uh, if I need to run any FPV gear or anything else off of this LiPo, I can do that uh, in the future. Um, I also plan on uh, adding the Ruby OSD expander onto the uh, actual Ruby. Uh, and that will also help me out with uh, powering my... Uh, um, FPV gear such as my camera and my uh, transmitter. 
So this is the installation of the uh, Ruby Autonomous Autopilot in your aircraft. Your needs may be a little bit different than mine. You may be running a wing, you may be running a, uh, a larger plane, um, but uh, know that any aircraft that you do decide to go with, Ruby can accommodate. The wire leads are long enough to fit you know, all throughout the plane. Ruby is small enough, versatile enough to fit inside any aircraft, and uh, I feel it'll make uh, flying any aircraft a lot more enjoyable, if not any safer. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and email support at youthere.com, uh, or if you'd like to uh, inquire about purchasing uh, the Ruby, go ahead and uh, go over to youthere.com. You can see some great videos of the capabilities of Ruby, and um, uh, hope to see you in the air with one of your Rubies soon.